former um, U.S. Congressman Joe Diaguardi, who has been petitioning to get Doris Dory Miller the Medal of Honor for over 30 years to the stage. It's a pleasure to come here. I don't live too far, Ossini. But when I was a U.S. Congressman, where I live today was part of my district. You know, every 10 years, they changed the lines. And it's very arbitrary. Don't think there's much to do with that. That's, that's all politics. You know, how many people can I get who are going to vote for me, put them in my district? And that has to change, by the way. We need independent people every 10 years to draw those lines. Everything has to be fair and transparent, no matter who you are in America. Now, I came here to support the Black Diamonds. I think it's been two years now, Martin, that I've uh, come up when you've asked me to, because the purpose is excellent, because you're looking for excellence. You're showing these young men, and by the way, when I told my wife I was coming up here, I said, my brother's keepers, she said, what about my sister's keepers? I said, well, I gotta tell that to Martin. Maybe we should have my brother's and sister's keepers, and uh, that might broaden the support. Uh, today, a lot has, has changed, you know, from before. But I'm happy to at least inspire young people to think big and work hard. My parents were immigrants, came here in 1929, no education. My dad came from a, a little village in Italy, and thank God he ended up in Harlem because he realized that the African-American people there, he was a farmer, like greens, collard greens, mustard greens, kale. And he was comfortable when he found out that the Bronx Terminal Market was not far from 125th Street. He went up to where the Yankee Stadium was in those days, and he bought those crates. He was only 16. He shined shoes for one year, and then at 16, he's selling these greens on the corner of 125th Street. And by 19, I guess it was 34, he had his own vegetable store in a place called Sugar Hill. 145th Street in Harlem. I was born in 1940, and by that time, it was a mini supermarket in the Bronx. He had no education, couldn't speak a word of English. Why am I saying that? This is America. You can be whoever you want to be in America. Did I know when I moved from the Bronx, and I was a waiter four years working my way through college, Elmwood Country Club, probably the wealthiest country club in America, was right next to my home. And when I turned 17, my father said, hey, your young brother will take your place in the store. You don't have to come in, but get a job. So I walked around the corner, and I volunteered for a job. I didn't know what for. And the manager said, okay, we need you. It's Memorial Day, 1957, and we need a lot of freshly squeezed juices. You're the bar boy for the weekend. Now, I impressed him, because my father always said, when you finish your job, ask for more. Impress them, because you want to get a better job. And that's what I did. And next weekend, they call me, hey, we don't need you as a bar boy, we want you as a bus boy. I played the same game. Everybody would leave early, not me. What else do you want me to do? This is the way my father taught me. And sure enough, a month and a half later, I was a waiter. And I, did, I made a lot of money in four years working my way through college at that country club. And why do I tell you that? Because it was in 1957 that my dad finally decided to move to Westchester County. We moved to Greenberg, a place called Orchard Hill. Why? My sister was two years younger than me. I'm the oldest. My brother was five years younger. And we only had one bedroom. My parents were in the bedroom. We used to sleep where the living room was, where the television was. I says, Dad, I know you're hungry. You came here with nothing. But we're getting to the age now where we need our own space. And he didn't buy it because to him, money was security. And he saved money. He deposited it. And finally, I ran away from home at 16, in effect, to get his attention. I bought a ticket down Broadway, $250 with the tips from the orders I delivered, and it said, 10 days, Miami Beach, plane included, food, and a hotel. In those days, 250 bucks. I wrote the check, came home. My mother was yelling and screaming, how, how could you do this? You have never been on a plane, you never went any place outside of New York. I says, I am tired of just working and not having the space I need. And now we gotta get out of this place. You're living on top of the, the store here, we need a better place. And sure enough, my father got going, and within a year, he bought this house in Greenberg, and that's where I was raised. Now, did I know 
when I moved to Westchester, son of immigrants, a waiter, working my way through college, I went to Fordham University, that I was gonna be the congressman of this great county called Westchester County. Today's one of the richest counties in America, if you're rich, but it's also one of the poorest counties in America. It's like my friend Mickey Leland, Congressman Leland. Here is the guy that helped me get the medals for black war heroes, right? I wish you could maybe zero in on this. Here's Mickey Leland. He was the head of the Congressional Black Caucus. What's that? That's a powerful group today. 54 black American women and men who are in the US Congress. And you have, I think, at least one senator, Tim Scott from South Carolina. So I went to him when a black historian, here he is right here, from Mount Vernon, New York, came to visit me to say, Joe, I need your help. You're the only one to answer my letter that I had Governor Cuomo write to every congressman in New York, from the New York district, 34 in those days. Now we're down to 27. And I said, well, come to my office. And he did. And he said, did you know that a million 550,000 African Americans, black Americans served World War I and World War II, and not one, not one got our nation's highest military award. Here it is. It's called the Medal of Honor. Not the Congressional Medal of Honor, that's the wrong title. The Medal of Honor. Every part of the armed services has their own medal, but the one that transcends them all for heroes that are so heroic that it's hard to describe what they did, it's called the Medal of Honor. Now I'll shorten the story for you. Mickey Leland started with me. He never lived to see the first one given by President Bush in 1991. I represented him. And by the way, we're having this weekend, South Carolina, right? Big African-American population. I bet you don't know who the first medal went to. It was Corporal Freddie Stowers, South Carolina, World War I. Obviously, he wasn't alive when he got it. But that's the first one. And I went to the White House. I was invited by President Bush, the first George H.W. Bush. And I never forget, it had to be about 10 years later, a young lady from South Carolina sends me an email. Congressman, you don't know who I am. My name is Letitia, but you made our family proud. And I cannot take it for granted what my grand uncle, Freddie Stowers, did. We did not know he was such a hero until you made a big deal of it. Well, that was number one. And since then, we've gotten nine. And I'm now working on number 10. And you know who that's going to be? That is Dory Miller, World War II. Not, not even a seaman. He was a messman. In other words, if you were African American in World War II and you're in the Navy, what you were trained to do is serve the white officers. Imagine that. But this guy did something that was so unbelievable when his battleship was struck on Pearl Harbor Day that he was not even recognized for doing it because the Department of Defense secretary was such a racist, he couldn't believe that this guy would get the first medal issued in World War II. So he hid most of what was done. The after action report was written, his name didn't even show up, but they did mention that there was this black guy who not only, when his captain was killed, not only did he move him aside, he was still alive, but he, he died shortly after, he grabbed a machine gun he was not trained to use and started shooting down Japanese MiGs. And when they said the boat is tilting and there are people stuck below and some of them are dying from asphyxiation, he, he was a pretty big guy, went down and brought them up one by one. Now it had to be publicized for him to get what he did because a year later when people complain, that black guy you're talking about is Dory Miller and we know who he is, and they started writing letters left and right. Why hasn't he been recognized? Why did he only get a commendation in a letter? Admiral Nimitz, after all those letters came in to show you how things move, when you stand up, he, Dory Miller survived that World War II shot in Pearl Harbor, volunteered for another ship called the Liscombe Bay, which was an, an aircraft carrier, and died on that ship. But before that happened, Within a year after he left Pearl Harbor, Admiral Nimitz himself, to quiet everybody, said, called him up, brought him to his ship. I forget which one that was, but the point is, he gave him the highest Navy award, the Navy Cross. 
but didn't give him the Medal of Honor. But we've been complaining a lot, and I have to thank the Black Diamonds and Martin McDonald for making such a big deal in Peekskill that we had a day here in Peekskill for Dory Miller. All right? That's getting out. And I'm also telling you that, you know, I'm persistent. I had people in San Diego on uh, Memorial Day declare it as Dory Miller Day in the big Navy base in San Diego. And then in Chicago, we have several things named after Dory Miller. I didn't know about it. And uh, Seth Dunlop called me and said, would you mind if we had uh, your uh, involved here in our naming this day in South Chicago, Dory Miller Day? Not at all. Let's do it. So the biggest surprise, and I think it had to do with this, is we still don't have the Medal of Honor for Dory Miller. But guess what we got? And it was all over the press, and I announced it when I came to the last thing we did on, on Martin Luther King's birthday at the Doubletree. The story came out that day that they named an aircraft carrier for Dory Miller. Only presidents have their names on aircraft carriers and Admiral Nimitz. Now we're going to have an aircraft carrier with a messman, the lowest of, of the low, but the highest of the high in terms of quality and bravery. It's going to be the Dory Miller. It'll be finished in six years, and it's going to cost $1 billion. $500,000. This is like an airfield, all right? Yeah, clap. Let's clap for the Pentagon that finally woke up to do something important. But now, I expected we'd get a medal, but I think now that means we're going to get it faster than I thought, because it, it would be ironic if they named this ship for Dory Miller and brought so much attention to him, and now you're going to see a lot of stories about his heroism, that they wouldn't give him the Medal of Honor. So this is why we have to keep going, because if you have a strong voice, people begin to hear it. And by the way, the truth never gets buried too long. It always comes to the surface, no matter what it is about, whether it's human rights or anything else. So we have to keep plugging away. I'm here to do that, and I love what Martin's doing. And Martin, you know, I'm a Roman Catholic practicing. I, I went to Mass this morning. I'm trying to go to Mass every day just to pray for the strength, I'll be 80, by the way, in September, and I need the strength to carry on with a strong voice for the people who don't have a strong voice. And I found many of those people in my district, I still work for them. Uh, Albanian people, my father came here from Italy in 1929, and he spoke two languages, Italian and Albanian, and I have been helping them with their human rights. The other thing is, read the papers today and look at what they said yesterday. The Pentagon couldn't find $10 trillion. I'm also the first CPA elected to Congress, and I just wrote another article. $10 trillion is a lot of money. You know where that can go? Help a lot of people. Now, with that, I know you came here for money, so I figured it's about 250 bucks that I'm gonna to contribute to the Black Diamonds, okay? For that. <laughs> All right, you take it, okay. With that, thank you. I'm pleased to be here. If you don't have a copy of this, see me, and I will, I will stay here a little while longer. I brought a box for these things. I want you to see all nine medals that have been issued and the one we're going to get for Dory Miller. God bless you. Bye.